Hello, hello, it's Sarah again, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the three shields. So remember, keeping that analogy of the heart being damaged, the heart not being able to pump as strongly as it used to, so then the body is not getting what it needs to function. The body responds, if you remember, by firing off three arrows. Those three arrows Adrenaline, angiotensin and aldosterone can be further damage into the heart and we need to stop that for you. So we put up shields and those shields are your medications. So the first shield that we put up blocks the arrow of adrenaline. The archer fires off adrenaline, the heart starts to beat quicker, beat harder, and the heart can deteriorate. So we put a shield up and we block the action of adrenaline. And that um, shield is called a beta blocker. So, beta blockers. So we've established anything in with all all. So beta blockers. Because they block the action of the arrow, they have the opposite effect. So they reduce heart rate, they reduce blood pressure, they allow the heart to relax in between beats, and it's damage limiting. So think of an analogy. Let's think about a car. So you have a classic car, and the car is going at 100 miles an hour. This is before we put the shield up. It's going 100 miles an hour. It's going to deteriorate quite quickly. But we then put a governor on it. We say we, we govern the car and limit the car to maybe 30 miles an hour. Well, it's not going to need as much petrol for a start, but it's, the engine is going to last longer. And you can see the same principle with beta blockers. You slow the heart rate down, the heart doesn't deteriorate at the speed that it would without. So, beta blockers are very, very important treatment for patients who have heart failure. It's very important that you discuss with your nurse, your doctor, your consultant about um, these drugs. Okay, so um, then we talk about the second shield. So we talked about the second arrow being fired off and that arrow was called angiotensin. Angiotensin increased the blood pressure, made the heart work harder, made the heart become stiff and thick because it was working harder. We need to block that arrow and we block it by, by another shield and that shield is called an ACE inhibitor. So without going through all the scientific bit, it blocks the production of this hormone here called angiotensin 2. So therefore the blood pressure doesn't go up, the blood vessels don't tighten, the heart doesn't work harder and so therefore you stop the heart from deteriorating at such a speed. So ACE inhibitors, what do they end in? Well they end with pril, so ramapril, enalapril, these type of drugs are ACE inhibitors. And ACE inhibitors, because they block angiotensin, have an opposite effect. So they will cause your blood vessels to relax, to dilate, the blood pressure to drop. So it's really important then that these drugs are, uh, are thought about for you. Remember though, if your blood pressure drops too much, it can make you feel dizzy. So if you do feel dizzy, it's really important that you talk to your clinician about this. Sometimes Ramapril can make you have a dry, tickly cough. And it's a cough that's quite irritable and troublesome. And so we have an alternative for those patients. So if you're not on anything and ending with Pril, Look for something on your prescription ending with artan. So, candesartan, losartan, valsartan, these type of drugs are alternatives to the ACE inhibitor. And they do exactly the same um, job, but without the side effect of a cough. The third 
shield that we'll put up blocks the third arrow, the arrow called aldosterone. As you remember, aldosterone causes fluid retention and edema, but this drug will help prevent your body from retaining fluid. And this drug is called an MRA, but look on your prescription chart. Look for spironolactone or eplerinone. And these type of drugs will block aldosterone. So these drugs are what we will be considering for you if you have been diagnosed with heart failure. It's really important that you are on the correct medication. But why I've not talked about doses today is that everybody is on different doses, different combinations, dependent on their individual need. So um, we've talked about medications, we've talked about how we give medications for can't pump heart failure in order to improve symptoms and to slow down deterioration of the heart. And they're really important in keeping you well for longer and improving your symptoms. But if you are on these treatments already and you still have symptoms, it's really good news that we can offer more medications if that's the case. So these drugs, which you might be aware of, you might have read, are aimed to improving the protection of the heart. And the medication that I'm talking about is something called Entresto. So I'm going to not talk about this in this video, but hopefully in a future video, I can tell you more about it. But just for you to know that if you still have symptoms, please go back to your clinician and talk about other options. Another option, again, for a future video is is device therapy and if you have can't pump heart failure so your heart is, muscle is damaged and can't squeeze then there is an, a, a possibility that you may fit the criteria for a device and these devices are called cardiac resynchronization therapy devices a big mouthful but basically aiming to improve symptoms, improve the function of a damaged heart. So again, um, talk about this to your with your clinician and that there are other options um, that you may um, explore. Thank you.